Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. I'm uh, increasingly reaching a conclusion. I'm still in the process, but uh, balance is uh, really heavy on one side, which is, it seems like our leaders, our elites, pushed by certain interests, really, really want to go to fight Russia, go to war. But they will not go to war. We will be mandated to go to war. It seems like these guys are avoiding any negotiations with the Russians, telling us that the Russians don't want to negotiate. But from all the statements, not all, but most of the statements I'm reading regarding this guy's, in, this guy's desire to negotiate with Russia is no. The Russians don't want to negotiate. It's nothing to negotiate. It seems like, to me at least, that these guys really push us into fighting the Russians pretty soon. Here I have another example where some experts are pushing towards troops, German troops this time, being deployed to Ukraine. What do you think those troops will do? Make love? Just bring, uh, I don't know, uh, aid or aids? What do you think they're going to do? They're going to fight the Russians. What do you think the Russians will do? In self-defense. So you have experts who tell us that international law does not say anything about troops being deployed to Ukraine. The German troops. What does that tell you? They're itching to go to send you, maybe your daughters, your brothers, your sisters, your sons, into fighting over there. Who are you? Let me show you this article. DPA International, March 29, 2024. German experts, these experts tell us that, yeah, you can go and fight the Russians, but should you? No, no, you can. These experts, what, Rubinstein, Kosman Stein, and uh, Kosman Berg, and who? Who are those experts? International law allows ground troops in Ukraine. But should you go even if it allows it? Should you? Is it smart? Nobody would stop me, prevent me from going with a good-looking woman at a bar at, let's say, 11.30 p.m. in a very fucked-up neighborhood. Nobody, there's no law you know, stopping me. But should I go? Don't you think that I might expose us to a little bidding and even worse? Is it wise to do that? Why would I pick that one? Why wouldn't I pick something else? You know, I mean, it's nothing illegal about going over there. It's the probable consequences of walking in that bar. All right, well, let's see. According to the German Parliament's lower house, Bundestag, research service, services, the deployment of ground troops by NATO country by a NATO country in Ukraine would not automatically make all other NATO countries parties to the conflict. That is, if Poland sends its troops or France sends its troops and the Russians are fucked them up, we are not under Article 5 have no obligation in helping them. It seems to me so the Germans are trying to push the Germans into war or justify their, well, that's your shit. And if you go over there, don't ask us to pick your garbage, okay? Let's read further. It is true that a state in question would itself become a part of the conflict, as emerges from an as yet unpublished state of affairs report of the parliamentary expert panel. And I'm quoting, if the NATO member state acts unilaterally, not within the framework of a previously decided NATO, op nation, NATO operation and outside NATO military command structures, neither NATO as a whole nor the other NATO partner states become parties to the conflict. End quote. The paper which was made available to DPA continues. Did you know that? Did you know that? I didn't know that. I thought, thank you very much, I thought that, uh, you know, uh, if NATO is attacked, uh, everybody's gonna go. But it seems like if one country unilaterally attacks someone else, that means the other guys don't have to go. So that means Ukraine can be part of NATO, but if, if it decides, let's say, in the future, let's say, the Russians are 
uh, screwing up uh, and they're losing somehow let's say if something happens nato gets ukraine and ukraine let's say says well you got um, donbass and you got the crimean peninsula we're gonna attack you and we're gonna do whatever we want Nate and they start fighting the Russians again and the Russians are going to fight these guys, the Ukrainians. NATO is under no obligation to defend uh, Ukraine. Is that what these guys are telling us? Therefore, but they can do the same thing as they're doing it right now. And uh, Ukraine being part of NATO. But if Russia attacks Ukraine, then NATO uh, attacks Russia. If NATO, if uh, Ukraine is part of, of uh, NATO. This is a proxy war. That means if Romania tomorrow, let's say unilaterally, attacks um, Russia, just because, I don't know, uh, they're upset with the drones falling on in, inside their territory, and the Russians retaliate, then Romania, just Romania, like Ukraine right now, is fighting Russia. So you have Romania fighting Russia, but NATO will be behind Romania. You know, you know? So I think they're, they're opening a little door for the Baltic states, for Poland, for Romania, for, uh, from, uh, uh, for other idiots, to just do something about the Russians and don't drag NATO in illegally. That means, again, we can punch you, you cannot punch us. Because that's what's going on in Ukraine right now. They are punching the Russians and the Russians are not punching them back. They're not allowed because we're not involved. I think they are involved, 99%. <laughs> I remember my analogy with... Uh, animal tamer or the tiger uh, in the circus, you know, the guy who takes care of the tigers and their lions, you know, in the, in the circus, he has a long pole and a long whip. These are the countries that these guys will be activated outside of NATO. But the guy who's going to organize the poking and the whipping is going to be NATO, uh, Al Capone, to be more precise, and behind the interests that shackled Al Capone. And they use Al Capone's political, economical and military power to uh, export or take over their resources and their in global interests. That's what it is. So I think they are getting ready for saying any NATO country that has a problem with Russia can start unilaterally a war with Russia and it's going to be Romania against Russia as is Ukraine against Russia and um, Estonia versus Russia or Poland versus Russia. And NATO will not be dragged in in a way that you, uh, Russia could not hit NATO. But NATO will provide everything for those guys. I told you, these guys are preparing fresh blood because there's no more blood in Ukraine, it seems like. I'm talking about the Ukrainian nation fighting for those interests, some of them not knowing. And they're going to use Poles, Romanians and other eager beavers. At the end of February, French President Emmanuel Macron did not rule out the deployment of ground troops in Ukraine in the future. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, on the other hand, clearly rejected the deployment of Western soldiers to Ukraine. According to her office, uh, AFD Bundestag member Beatrice von Stork then asked what impact a deployment of ground troops by NATO state, by a NATO state, would have with regard to the so-called alliance case in which NATO members are obliged to start stand up for each other. The Bundestag experts wrote, and I'm quoting, if troops of a NATO member state engage in collective self-defense, Article 51, UN Charter, in favor of Ukraine in an existing conflict between Russia and Ukraine and are attacked by the other party of the conflict, Russia, in the course of the battle in the conflict area, this does not constitute a case of Article 5 NATO treaty. Okay? All right, in self-collective self-defense. They pointed out that Article 5 of NATO treaty is linked to NATO countries and troops being attacked on or over their territory. And I'm quoting, a military engagement of French ground troops in favor of Ukraine would be based on the collective right of self-defense under 50, Article 51 of the UN Charter and would therefore be permissible under international law. So they say that if, if the French troops go into the war zone and they're shot at by the Russians, then in self-defense, the guys who came to, Ru to Ukraine to fight the Russians or just to keep the peace over there, they can retaliate in self-defense under the Article 51. But that would not constitute immediately the triggering Article 5 of NATO, which is everybody else will support France. Interesting. So again, look at the map. 
did Russia move towards a Europe, Western Europe, or Western Europe, NATO moves, moved towards its border towards Russia? It's very easy. So when they say that Putin wants to invade uh, Europe, I think is exactly the other way around. Those guys want to take care of Russia because if you have a threat over there, you move closer. Uh, yes and no. Depends what kind of interest you got. All right. So uh, let's see. A military reaction by Raksha against targets in France, on the other hand, would constitute an armed attack. <laughs> exactly what I said. A military reaction, I'm quoting, by Russia against targets in France. So the French will bring troops in Ukraine. The Russians will smack them, as he said. And then the, 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 the Russians, if they hit something at the center, you remember the, the animal tamer? If, he, if the lion attacks the, the man in charge of those, uh, that pole and that whip, that's uh, against international law. So you like that international law? I wonder if this works for Russia too. Because when you have a law that's, that works across the board. So I wonder if, there, if you switch positions and you put Russia in the position of the French troops, if that would be available as well, if that would be legitimate. I guarantee you, then we're going to have, um, no, no. Well, with that kind of uh, interpretation, thank you. So again, a military reaction, I'm quoting, by Russia against targets in France, on the other hand, would constitute an armed attack, contrary to international law, within the, mean, uh, the meaning of Article 5 of the NATO Treaty, which would establish the factual requirements for a proclamation of the NATO alliance case. So that means we can hit you, you cannot. Okay, and the Russians will listen to that, I'm guaranteeing you. The research services are a sub subdivision of the Bundestag consisting of eight specialized departments with around 100 employees. Uh, they just uh, try to build legitimacy. If those 100 are promoted and hired by certain kind of means and criteria, you can have 3,000. It doesn't really matter. The experts research topic of the request at the request of the individual MPs and are also for Bundestag committees. They produce brief information, documentation, factual reports. This is they build their uh, legitimacy right here. Okay, right here. Parliament think tank according in the info sheet. They are also referred as the parliament, parliament think tank. Accordingly, they work in a politically neutral and objective manner. Shut your pie hole up. All right, you got them. So what do these guys do right now? They try to legitimize this. If France goes over there and fights on its own, we, the Deutsche folk, we're not going to intervene. But if the Russians destroy them over there, we don't intervene. But if the Russians hit the, the, the command post of, which is Paris, then we all go in. But hey, the, the, the military presence, the French military presence, presence in the war zone is over there to do what? What do you think they will do? They said they will, uh, they, this garbage, this guy said that uh, they will, um, I'm going to show you, deploy the troops, the French troops, and I'm going to show you the map, on the northern part of Ukraine, right here at the border of Belarus, right here, uh, leaves Lukashenko. So <laughs> here at the border to allow the Ukrainians to move from here, their forces to fight the Russians down there. But I wonder if the Russians go as they did before and they intervene here and they invade. Let's say they want to attack Kiev from Belarus as they did before. What do you think the French troops will do over there? In self-defense, will attack. What if the Russians don't attack the French? They just move on. Do you think the uh, French would just say, okay, we're not going to shoot at you, you don't shoot at us, just pass by? Then what's your role over there? What's your purpose to be deployed here? To defend? What exactly? Let's say the Russians invade without shooting. Are, you gonna, are the French troops going to shoot at the Russians? No. Or yes. But if these guys shoot, that means they are not in self-defense. Oh, but they are in self-defense. You know why? Because they feel threatened. And when you feel threatened, I feel threatened by these glasses right now. What the fuck? Are... Okay? Or I feel threatened by you. Out the window you go. Is that how it works? Yes. Can the Russians claim the same thing? No. No. They can be destroyed. Why? Because they are the aggressor. Not the 2014. Nah. Not the Maidan. Nah. Not the Russian speaking population in east of uh, Ukraine being killed by Kiev with tanks, by the military. 
Why? Because they disagreed with an overthrow of a with a coup organized by <coughs> Victoria Newland <coughs> um, in uh, 2014, right? Not organized, but part of. Let's put it mildly. In 2014, over a legitimate, legitimate, uh, recognized government, democratically elected government of Ukraine, and immediately recognized the overthrowers, immediately recognized by the democracy-loving countries. Hypocrisy, to say the least. All right, so I think oh, these guys are really getting ready to find all kind of means to tell us that we can hit those guys. They cannot hit us because why? We're strong. Have you? Maybe you didn't, but I'm going to men mention this. I love this particular part in the movie Troy with Brad Pitt. I was not a fan of that movie or Brad Pitt in general, but I mentioned it because I liked that particular uh, portion. Remember when uh, uh, Patroclus is killed by Hector and then um, Achilles goes to uh, Troy the walls of Troy and say, Hector, come over so we can straighten things out. And Hector comes down. Remember when they fight in front of the walls of Troy? Troy? And then at one point, um, Hector uh, moves move backwards and he trips on a little rock and he falls on his back. And Achilles did not kill him or did not uh, take advantage of that. And what did Achilles say? He said, stand up or get up. I will not let a rock take my uh, uh, glory or something like that. That means I'm not going to let that little thing. Why? Because he, he knew he was strong and he had a certain kind of um, virtue that we lost now. We want to fight with other people, but at the same time, we're strong. NATO is strong. We're strong, but we don't fight. We let the Ukrainians fight for us. And we, we, we can hit you, but you cannot hit us. Is that a, uh, I don't know, um, uh, an attribute of a strong person? You can say a smart person. Well, wasn't Achilles uh, smart to kill him right there? You see, that's a weasel way. You know, um, deferring or um, uh, avoiding responsibility is not uh, a smart thing. It's a weasel, a shirker, someone said. A doctor, by the way. Uh, he said, a shirker. When you avoid responsibility, and this is how the, the society looks right now. These guys, if you avoid responsibility and you don't do something, you don't participate, but somehow we take advantage of that. So I don't put anything over there, but then I get the, I don't know, the fruits of the result. That's not smart. That's weak. That's weasel. That's a shirker. So this is what these guys are. We're going to destroy Russia, not with our strength, but we're still strong. Yeah, we're strong. Yeah, yeah. We always work in pack in an alliance. What does that tell you? Strength? God damn it. No, there's not strength. The individual is strong against more. The, the, the numbers show weakness. We need all together now. Yeah, but we're strong and he's weak. He's alone, but he fights alone. But we fight also in a pack. You understand where we got, where these guys got us uh, to think about our culture, our civilization? Our uh, children are taught that way. Being smart. Uh, look at your interest. Where is loyal loyalty? Where are the virtues? Ah, we got different virtues right now. Different virtues. And th those virtues used in a society will destroy the society. Not the elites. The elites will still go by the same virtues, but they will use us and say, hey, you got to use this kind of uh, virtues. So, yeah, I think these guys are getting ready to really get involved in uh, active fighting with Russia, making the case that you cannot hit us. If you dare to hit us, then we, we as strong as we are, we're going to smack you back. Russia will not give a fuck. And Russia has about what? 7,000 uh, nuclear warheads. What do you think they will do? I think they will use them. Thank you very much for uh, being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.